Burnett Showstoppers, next. From Television City in Hollywood, it's the Carol Burnett Show, Showstoppers. With Harvey Corman. Vicki Lawrence. And Tim Conway. Plus 11 seasons of comedy showstoppers. Well, way there for it's <laughs> catching, isn't no it? Bless your hide. It's been a long day. <laughs> I said to myself, Blossom Butterworth, I said, I said, Blossom Butterworth. <laughs> You've had it, Carol Burnett. to be back in the studio on this stage this is where we did the show for 11 wonderful years and um, <laughs> let's bump up the lights and see if y'all have any questions that you might have. yes in the back why haven't you done this before <laughs> why haven't I done this before I thought I had <laughs> <laughs> We immortalize people in different ways, name ships after them, put them on postage stamps. What would you wish for your immortalization? A ship and a postage stamp. <laughs> like that. Oh, they are going to, I'm having a rose named after me soon. Isn't that nice? I've been in love with you since I was probably about this high. <laughs> One of the sexiest things you have ever done is the Tarzan yell. Oh, you know, One of the sexiest One of the things. Sexiest oh, absolutely. <laughs> you, what's your name? Scott. Scott, are you all right? <laughs> do you want me to do the Tarzan yell? Okay. Tonight, I have my wonderful buddies with me, Tim, Harvey, and Vicki.
for sale or rent. Rooms to let in this is a man of no no name. Tonight for your delight and inspection. of our perfection. <laughs> I am so glad we had this time together. Just at last thing Tonight. It's about uh, goofs and things that we just let happen and didn't change. And most of the clips you're going to see tonight, nobody's ever seen before. We, they've been locked up in Tim's basement, but we got them out. So you're going to. So the next, we have a big show for you, so don't go away. We will be right back. Carol and her guests will be back with more laughs. She'd have made it if she hadn't been wearing her lucky am. <laughs> Questions for the guys here. Yes. What have you done since the show stopped airing? I'm uh, collecting unemployment checks. <laughs> Actually, you know, that's a fallacy. Um, Mr. Corman and I are down here every Friday doing the show. They have not been taping it for 11 years. <laughs> Still but we had a lucky night tonight. They're actually taping. This yes. is wonderful. I really think we got people here. Back here. Hi. 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 Uh, I've always wondered, did you always do the series live? We did we do the series live? Several of us were dead at the time, but <laughs> you mean had we passed away earlier than this? Yes. Yes. I was gone about a year and a half. <laughs> I'm in formaldehyde right now. Actually, we did it like this. We had a, 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 an audience, and we tried never to stop. We had to stop for scene changes and quick costume changes yeah. and stuff like that. But if something went wrong, <laughs> which it often did, uh, we would barrel right, right through those. We would do a 5 o'clock show, and then we'd get a different audience in for the later show. 
Conway here would do the sketches to the ink as they were on the first show, you know. Then he would ask our director, Dave Powers, he said, uh, did you get all the shots in him? And Dave said, yes. Then the air show, the next show, would be for Tim. And of course, then he'd get on a roll, stuff that we had never heard before, and that's when he would destroy Harvey. Sergeant the Harrison. <laughs> now this was the first time Tim ever used that accent. Harvey had never heard it. Heard <laughs> Tourist and the bullet conduct in the face of the enemy. And we're going there to uh, relieve you of your duties, strip you of your rank, and to give you a dishonorable discharge from the service of your country. Do you have anything to say? Do you know what you've done? You left those poor boys in that ditch. That's what you did. That big bomb came and a lot of guys got a big knot on their head. And you went in the town. Probably went to some place in the, where you could sing. I'd like to sing myself, but there's a time for singing. And there's a time for duty. When you're off duty, then you can sing. When they're on duty, you shouldn't have to sing. <laughs> but if you're in the barracks and you like it to sing. <laughs> oh, I tell you. Wow. <laughs> tell me, I ask you, is that not cruel and unusual punishment? <laughs> is there anybody in this audience that could have sat there or stood there and, and withstood that kind of Torture? <laughs> I tried. I believe me. I used to lay awake nights trying to figure out ways to get him. And no matter what I tried, he'd always turn it around, and I got it. But listen to this and watch this, ladies and gentlemen. For the first time in television history, he got himself. <laughs> please, he destroyed himself. Watch this, please. I lost a girlfriend to the sharks, you know that? Yeah. Yeah, we were over in Hawaii. She jumped off the front of the sailboat and tried to swim to shore. Uh, got about 40 yards from the shore, and great white hit her. Mm. She'd have made it, too. <laughs> she'd, have, she'd have made it if she hadn't been wearing her lucky ham. <laughs> Did you, did you hear that? Because he was, if she hadn't been wearing her lucky ham. I, uh, oh. I was so pleased with that line, I just tickled myself silly. I think. We had a betting pool all week, whether yeah. he would have gotten through it or not. Absolutely. I um, knew he wouldn't. Uh, well, I got, I got Tim, though. I did get him once. I mean, it took some doing, but... Um, <clears throat> Which one? I was, was supposed was a... to be a mannequin in a window. Well, uh -huh. I was posing, was as, posing a mannequin, as a mannequin. But in a I was window. really a peeping Tom, yeah, a peeping and, Tim. Yeah, and I decided that I was uh, I was going to get him, and that uh, I was going to. I went and got some props, and I um, I flashed him. to say this uh, wasn't me. This was a costume body thing I got from costumes. <laughs> uh, obviously, they weren't mine, folks. <laughs> I actually looked like a deer caught in the headlights there. <laughs> Oh, but you, when you got him, you really got him good. I loved it. You got Yeah, but I cracked up all the time, too. Yeah, like when, when I was bathing him that Oh, time. I love that. When you <laughs> sang, that, sang him a lullaby. Yeah, and I bathed him, and I, uh, I dropped the sponge. That's true. <laughs> Thank you. 
Stay tuned for more Showstoppers. I think somebody blew your pilot light out. Do you use Viagra? All they can do is just blow and go... North. Have anything you want to say to Philip before he hangs up? Yeah, will you ask him if he knows whether you can buy houses when it's not your turn? <laughs> One thing, Philip. Can you buy houses when it... Can you buy houses when it's not your turn, or do you have to wait? <laughs> In Monopoly! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my mother, my sister, and my friend, Vicki Lawrence. Some questions for Vicky. Vicky, you want to pick up? Who are you? Who? No, you go That's ahead. And you. Pick okay. Me. Yes, the gentleman in the nice pink shirt. No, it's white with red stripes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is it white with red stripes? You're the four funniest people in the whole wide world. Can I take you home with me? Uh. that Vicki Lawrence invited you, Carol, to go see a high school play, and that's how you guys met up and... She uh, wrote me a fan letter, I'm and we were going to do the show. I know this whole uh, story, Do you know this story? <laughs> oh, I'll tell oh, it anyway. Oh, Lord. No. <laughs> she wrote me a fan oh, letter. God. Sit up. <laughs> so... She, she wrote me a fan letter, and I... Uh, she said she looked like me, and we were going to do this show, and so... Uh, I found out that she was going to be in a contest, Miss Fireball of Inglewood. Can you order me a, a tuna so, fish sandwich on rye? So, um, so anyway. You took my father's name out of this article. That's right. Looked us up in the phone book yeah. and called. And I called. Mm -hmm. And Vicki's mother picked up the phone and said, hello. And I said, is Vicki Lawrence there, please? And she said, yes, who's calling? And I said, Carol Burnett. And she said, Vicki! <laughs> And so then, you know, here she can be. The rest is television yeah, history. Was just... so I was going to be a dental hygienist. Yeah. Do you use Viagra? <laughs> the idea of my using Viagra would be like putting a brand new flagpole on a condemned building. <laughs> The first few years, Vicky, um, Vicky was uh, so shy, you know. But later, she she started to blossom, you know, when Mama came along. One of these days, they're gonna come over here and lock you up. Oh, lay off of me! You ain't playing with a full deck, Eunice. <laughs> I think somebody blew your pilot light out. <laughs> in the windmills of your mind. Hey, well, wait, wait. That was the early show, and then she had more for me on the next show. Okay. Everybody was loading oh, her really up. Really nuts, you know? <laughs> One of these days, they're gonna come over here and just lock you up. You lay off of me. You are playing with full deck units. <laughs> I think you done sprung a leak in your dinghy. <laughs>
we try to be so real during the family sketches because they were real. So many people really identified with them because they were like their families. But we had our, some of our greatest goofs and Crackers. craziness that went on during the family. You sketches. got me oh, again. And the the, the, and sor sorry. Oh, the games. We, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, the games yeah. that we played really as the family were just yeah. games. so fun. Yeah. And I just got, this was Method Mama. I got carried away. I, know. I don't know. You I, were supposed to say, gosh darn, and you said know. something else. I and got I carried up. away with the game. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Let's just move him back the number of spaces that I moved him for. She's well, right. How many spaces did you move it? Well, how the hell should I know? <laughs> <laughs> you mean you don't remember how many spaces you moved that thing just a second ago? Well, I guess I'm just too stupid ever to grab the gut <laughs> up the <some> face. <laughs> <laughs> You know, a lot of times the show would be running very long. Shh, we're trying to do a show. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and they would ask me, uh, you know, not to mess around because we were, you know, way over. And we were playing a little game in the family scene where I was just supposed to give you one word clue. I was we supposed to password. say elephant. But I thought I would take an opportunity at that point uh, to bring some knowledge that I had learned from National Geographic. And uh, it did lengthen the show a bit, but uh, I felt yes, it was, I thought it was good bit, information. Yes. Just a, uh, I was at this freak show one time and I, I saw these Siamese elephants. at the end of their trunks like that. <laughs> and this uh, trainer make them stand up on their back feet like that and it had their trunk stretched like that. <laughs> then this little monkey had come out. <laughs> and walk out there and dance a merengue right out there. <laughs> kind of felt sorry for them. They couldn't go like the other elephants when they go... <laughs> All they could do is just blow and go, North <laughs> Stoppers. We were naughty. Oh. Of Mother Marcus, because we're going to see a Mother Marcus clip in a second. Yeah. Mother right. Marcus story. When Harvey, Harvey was a, like a mentor to me when, when I was growing up here a lot. Because she, I you know, you had a show her to run. So Harvey did a lot. Of, he trained me. He did a lot of comic training with me. And one time there was this bimbo I used to play on the show. She was really stupid. She had a really high voice. And I said to Harvey, How come every time I play her, I'm stupid for the whole week? And you said to me, any character you ever do well, Vicky, is truly a part of you. <laughs> I'll take credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> to which I said to Harvey, so how come you're so good in drag? <laughs> I haven't the faintest clue. I've never got an answer. <laughs> I love the Mother Marcus oh. drag so much that mm. this this was I think the first sketch that you were in 
as Mother Marcus, and I couldn't resist. Oh, yes. <laughs> going away from the script just for a second or two. Oh, yes, we love going away from the script. <laughs> Say. <laughs> Bosoms reminded me of when you were uh, Charles' mother. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. yes. Thing. <laughs> you know, those boobs were wonderful. Yeah. But, yeah, oh, yeah, and Bob Mackey, our costume designer, you know, put, put all that stuff together. And the, the, what he would do to make them look real, he would put rice in them. <laughs> well, yeah, I remember having a whole rack of boobs. Like a, like a rack of ribs. I had a rack of boobs. There were small, medium, large, little push, medium push, over the top push. Down mm. to the knees. Raisins, no raisins. You know, uh, my yeah. wife's boobs went from 32C to 34 long. <laughs> you know, when we're, we uh, travel on the road and people ask us about, you know, what happened on the show and was it rehearsed, you know, we did a lot of stuff that was not rehearsed. We love jousting with each other, playing verbal ping pong, yeah. and we loved, you know, twisting and throwing something at the guy that he wasn't expecting and watching it come back. We did a lot of that. However, the money would then go to my equally disgusted nephew, Theo Grubba, in the event of Bosco's death. <laughs> <laughs> have a little snack before dinner. Good. And then later, if you'd like, I could run down to the pier and fish for sea bass. <laughs> bass? <laughs> bass is good, and a piece of bass is even better. Listen. <laughs> you were so naughty. <laughs> you were naughty. Oh. We were very we were. naughty. Yes. We used to, and we used to do most of the show, like you have been saying, like a live show. But sometimes when we did uh, the commercial takeoffs, we used to do in the little short vignettes. Uh, we would tape those in the afternoon on this stage with just the crew and no audience. And, and, we and would you get guys to, would get a little crazy we sometimes. We would get you'd have a little raunch. too much fun. Raunchy, <laughs> raunchy. <laughs> I don't want that. It tastes fishy. Try it, eh? Salty doesn't taste fishy. I say it does taste fishy. I'm telling you, it doesn't. Try it. Yes, it does, then I won't. I said try uh. it. <laughs> it doesn't taste fishy. I wonder why. It's a veal cutlet, you asshole. <laughs> 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 it doesn't taste fishy, you asshole. I wonder why. <laughs> Now, this next one, even the crew got mm. in on it. It doesn't taste fishy. I wonder why. It's a it doesn't taste fishy. Oh, it doesn't taste fishy. Do you guys ever get messed up uh, by any of the sets or props? Oh, well, you must have seen a few oh, where we did. That we get messed up with props and oh. sets. Oh, no. Everything no. was always perfect. Perfect. Yeah. perfect. Yeah. perfect. Yeah. Technically perfect. Yeah. He missed your opening number, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Most of the scary. time, technically, it worked pretty good. There were oh, some rough always. spots. Yeah. I remember one time, I, it was very important for me, uh, I was in a wheelchair oh, hey. in a hospital, that this wheelchair operate correctly. And if it hadn't been for the technical crew giving me this perfect wheelchair, the sketch just would have gone away. Yeah. But it was just Ooh. perfect. Ah. Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries, you'll be all right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
over, we've got one of Harvey. We were doing the show, and guess who was in the audience this one oh, evening? Oh, that was night. Sir Lawrence, Lord Lawrence Olivier. Baron, I think it was a baron by that time. My you were a idol. wreck. You, you were, were a totally wreck. a wreck. I was a wreck, and I <laughs> felt that the material we were about to do wasn't worthy of him. And, you know, it was, and, 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 and I had a thing where my pants fell down. And when your pants fall down, you're supposed to put boxer shorts on. Guess who forgot to put his boxer shorts on? Oh, boy. Who's the weasel? Oh, yeah. I mean, one of the, the funniest ones for me that happened to me was not technical either. It was sort of nature. Uh, the, the, oh. the old horse. <laughs> and when his chest is bare, I can count every hair he has to in the family hour <laughs> that you can see this. <laughs> of Cher's clothes. <laughs> True. Bob Mackey does mine. Now, I want you to see the kind of work that goes into one of these outfits. <laughs> and the man is a genius, I must say. And he designs all these things. And I, th I think, since we're not on in the family hour, <laughs> that you can see this. with us here tonight. Where are you, Bobby? There he is. There's, there's our Jimmy. <laughs> that, that most people don't know that Bob Mackey designed every single thing that was on the air, uh, not just the pretty stuff and all of that at the top of the show, but he designed everything, uh, which well, I guess it averaged out to about 50 5 costumes a week. He created the looks. He, he, it was Bob who came up with the Scarlett O'Hara curtain rod thing. See? So. The first time I was going to do Mrs. Wiggins, you know, I, I, I didn't know exactly how I was going to do, uh, you know, uh, 
portray her. And I went into costumes, and Bob put me in that push-up bra with the funny little blouse and the blonde wig, and this tight black skirt that was an old black skirt he had around there. And it was very tight here at the bottom, but the, the rear end bagged. And I said, well, it, it fits, Bob, everywhere, but it's too baggy, and so I think you're going to have to take it in in the rear end. And he said, no. No, why don't you just stick your behind into it and make it happen like that? And that's how the Wiggins walk happened. <laughs> If the dress you're wearing makes you feel like a queen, hey, that's a Mackie rag. If the dress you're wearing makes you slightly obscene, Woo! Woo! that's a Mackie rag. When he built me a bodice, I was a sexier me. as cute as could be. Well, you've seen some hot mamas, but you sure as hell ain't never seen a mama like me. <laughs> That's a Showstoppers. Let me check your reflexes. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Franny, you look as beautiful as ever. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad we had this time together. Just to have a laugh or sing a song. Seems we just get started, and before you know it, comes the time we have to say so long. There's a time you put aside for dreaming, and a time for things you have to do. But the time I love the best is any evening. Spend a moment here with you when the time comes and I'm feeling lonely and I'm feeling oh so blue. I just sit 
back and think of you only and the happiness everybody. This has been a Joe Hamilton production. Tonight, Dave's got Regis co-host.